let's talk about the the six days followed by a seventh through the the system of sixes and sevens in the scripture um, perhaps in Leviticus Exodus so it's in the Ten Commandments uh, of course in the Ten Commandments you have the Sabbath day remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy so you have six days of labor one day of rest right but as you mentioned you have the whole uh, many of the festivities of the Old Testament the festivals were predicated on a series of seven okay and there were uh, in the springtime uh, from the 16th day of Nisan or Abib as they called it then you had a count of 50 days forward till they waved the first sheaf of the barley har of the wheat harvest excuse me that was the day of Pentecost oh I thought that was barley the barley was on the 16th day oh and then it was wheat on the 50th day after that oh yeah. I didn't know that yeah so of course you know on the 14th day that represents the death of Jesus because that's when he died as the Passover lamb mm -hmm. 15th day he rested in the tomb on the 16th day he was raised and when they waved the barley on that 16th day it was a little picture of the resurrection of Jesus Paul captures that in 1st Corinthians 15 when he says Jesus is the first fruit from the dead or the first fruit of their agricultural cycle was the barley harvest in the spring right so the very day that they waved that in thanks to God for the first fruit was the day that Jesus was raised as the first fruit from the dead well now he's going to bring other people with him into the Christian body and give them a share of the hope of glory. When did that begin? That began on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, chapter 2. Right. Chapter 2 and 3. So it turns out that on the 50th day, that's the day when the wheat harvest was ready, and that's the day when the wheat crop, that is the true church, begins to be accepted into the Christian uh, sphere, into the Christian uh, privileges. You remember the terrible the parable of the wheat and the tares? The, ta the wheat are the children of the kingdom, and the tares are the imitation tares. So the wheat it represents the church class that is gathered starting on the day of Pentecost. All those things, you know, pertain to spiritual realities that would happen later. But that cycle of seven is what it was predicated on. Now, if the church is going to have their blessing on the 50th day of Pentecost, you know, there was a bigger cycle yet. And that's going to picture when the world of mankind is going to have their liberation and their blessing in the millennial kingdom. Now that bigger cycle was the jubilee cycle. The, the jubilees. So they kept not seven days, but seven years cycles. Six years you'd labor for the, you'd toil till the soil. The seventh year the land rested. And you took seven of those seven year periods and then the 50th year would be the jubilee when everyone, no matter what their experiences were during the last 49 years, they'd have everything restored back to them again. And that's a little picture of how mankind, during the period of sin and death, they've lost a lot. They've gone into bondage and into servitude to sin. But in the thousand year millennium, they would be restored to what they had at the beginning with Adam and inheritance of perfect life. And they will be recovered. Mm -hmm. And that's the Jubilee arrangement, again, on a period of seven. So the very fact that the millennial kingdom is also on this period of seven, right. the seventh millennium, is kind of it's a general pattern. So um, now I, I to me, I think uh, the Jubilee has got to be one of my favorite um, passages of all scripture yeah. uh, because um, it deals with the real um, inequalities uh, and injustices that have constantly been uh, a part of human history. Uh, at the beginning, they they divided the land equally by families, um, drew lots, and each tribe, each family of each tribe, got a plot of land, and they could they could raise their crops on it. As you know, so none of the land was actually owned by people. It was essentially. God says, I own this land. That's it. Always was God's. Yeah. And, uh, you the, have the right to use it. <laughs> yeah. You can use it, but if you, uh, you know, if, if things happen and you can, you can basically buy and sell a, le a lease to use it until the 50th year. But at the, after the 50th year, nobody's going to get to keep whatever they had until, you know, into well, the next period. Yeah. They, they have to restore whatever was not the original... Uh, bequeathment. 
it has to go back to the the people who lost it or their children right in that picture right right so Jubilee is something that is really catching on. Have you noticed how much it's catching on in, in conversation? People are talking about Jubilees a lot. They're talking about it in, in the context of debt forgiveness, in the context of, uh, uh, you know, br bringing freedom to human beings. The, the human race, the secular world, is picking up on this idea, and it's like an idea whose time has come.